Hello and welcome to another episode of The Mark Medley Show. And this is your host, Mark Medley, and I am thrilled to once again be sharing with you through this platform. Today's topic or today's episode was inspired by a clip or an excerpt or a line from a eulogy delivered by former President Barack Obama for the Honorable Elijah Cummings. Elijah Cummings was a congressman who passed away a little over a week ago and he was funeralized a day or so ago. And one of his eulogists was, again, former President Barack Hussein Obama. And there was a line in there that immediately leaped out at me. And I said when I heard it, that is going to be my next podcast episode. That is going to be my next The Mark Medley Show episode. And it resonated with me because I had the distinct honor and pleasure to meet Representative Cummings last year about this time. As a matter of fact, it was on November 3rd because he was the keynote speaker for the Patterson chapter of the NAACP, their Freedom Luncheon. And I was one of the honorees. So I was actually sitting on that dais with Representative Cummings. And I shared on my radio show last week that I didn't get an opportunity to take a picture with Representative Cummings because his schedule, he had to quickly return back to the Maryland area, to the Washington area. So really didn't have an opportunity for a photo op. But I did have the opportunity to record his keynote address to the folks at that luncheon on November 3rd, 2018. And I will keep that recording. And interestingly enough, there was another line that President Obama had mentioned during the eulogy that he said, Elijah Cummings always said, and sure enough, he had said that during the luncheon last year. And that was two or three hundred years from now. What will folks ask about what we did? And somewhere in that speech to us at the Brownstone House in Patterson or New Jersey, Representative Cummings asked that same question. But today's episode was more focused on the line from former President Obama when he says, you're not a sucker to have integrity and to treat others with respect. That's quote unquote, and that's the title of the episode today. You're not a sucker to have integrity and to treat others with respect. I can't tell you as being an educator dealing with children how many times I hear from them that they are instructed from home that if someone hits you, you hit them back. And it is a hard sell to help young people or old people for that matter understand that hitting back is not always the best solution. That hitting back only exacerbates the problem. That violence only begets more violence. And with our current administration in the White House, that's his moniker. That's his tagline. That If someone hits you, you hit back harder. And many, in my mind, much of the support that I believe that our current administration gets is because there are a lot of folks who connect with that philosophy in terms of if you get hit Hit back harder. That it's all right to be nasty. That it's all right to be disrespectful. That it's okay to constantly be degrading and name calling. That this is okay. If you notice, since our current administration has been in place, the tone and the timbre of the country. I mean, it has never been the absolute best, but certainly it has gotten worse since our current president has been in the seat. So when former President Obama mentioned that 
you're not a sucker to have integrity and to treat others with respect. Many people think that if you're kind and if you treat people with respect, that you're soft. Many people think that trying to resolve a conflict peacefully, they think that's soft. Many think that having a conversation or talking, many think that's soft. A couple of the other comments that came out in that eulogy was being a strong man includes being kind. There is nothing weak about kindness and compassion. There is nothing weak about looking out for others. There is nothing weak about being honorable. Quote, unquote, former President Barack Obama. I'm going to read that again. Being a strong man includes being kind. There is nothing weak about kindness and compassion. There is nothing weak about looking out for others. There is nothing weak about being honorable. You're not a sucker to have integrity and to treat others with respect. And yet, one would find it hard to believe how many people believe that they are a sucker or that they're soft or that they've given something away by being kind, by being respectful, by trying to help someone else out, by trying to solve something peacefully without having to result to violence. We're living in a time now where if you look at someone the wrong way, literally, they may pull out a gun and blow you away. Your life will end because you looked at someone the wrong way. Your life will end because you accidentally stepped on someone's toe. That's where we are in 2019. And the prognosis is not looking much better as we enter into 2020. Because so many people believe that they have to be quote unquote hard. As the kids can say hard. They believe that if they don't strike back, if they don't yell back, if they don't curse back, that they're not being hard. That they're being soft. That they're being a wuss. That they're punking out. When there's nothing further from the truth, the only thing that's happening is the violence, the anger just continues to escalate and go higher, higher, and higher. I share with children all the time, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, if by chance you did get into a fight with your classmate, we call that shooting the one or they shot the one, it was one on one. Whoever won, one, whoever lost, lost the next hour or two or next day, you were friends again. It is not like that today. I share with the students all the time. Even when you win today, you stand a chance of losing. And let me explain that. What I mean by that is the victor thinks he or she is all of that. When in reality, the victim now goes and gets 10, 15, or 20 more people to come back after you. So even though you won that one-on-one -on -one fight, if it was that at all, now you have 10 or 15 people that are laying for you. That now as you're going on about your business thinking everything is over, you wind up getting jumped or killed. And then guess what? When that happens to you, now you go back and get another 10 or 15 people. And before you know it, we have a gang war going on. Before you know it, we have a community war going on. Before you know it, we have a city war going on. That's what always having to feel like when you get hit, hit back harder. That's what in many cases it results in. So President Obama was absolutely correct when he said you're not a sucker to have integrity and to treat others with respect. As a matter of fact, that's what the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was trying to get across with the civil rights movement with nonviolence. We could take it back further to Gandhi. That's what the message they were trying to get across, that everything does not always result in having to pull out a weapon or use our fists or to name call or to degrade or to make someone feel as if you are better than them because of the money that you have because of the stature or the status that you have, because of the power that you have, because of the skin color that you have. That's what he's talking about when he says, you're not a sucker. Yet I honestly believe the reason that this particular administrator gets the report or the support that he gets is because there's too many folks out there who honestly believe 
that if you have some integrity, if you treat others with respect, that you're a sucker. That's where those comments came from. Someone asked, I was listening to a reporter of one of Obama's former speech writers, and they said, do you think when he put those words in there, he was intentionally trying to take a dig at the current president? And the speech writer said no, because that's not the way Obama thinks. His message is always a bigger message about broader topics, broader issues, about how we as a people can be a better people. He's not necessarily looking to be taking a dig at anybody, but if the shoe fits, wear it. Because the current administrator has openly said when he gets hit, he hits back harder. We see where that's getting him. That's a topic for another episode. But in any event, if we would understand that line, you're not a sucker to have integrity and to treat others with respect. If we would start doing that, if more of us would truly start respecting each other, if more of us would truly be able to forgive, if more of us were able to understand, okay, it was a mistake, if more of us were able to put ourselves in the shoes of someone else, we may not be as quick to always feel the need to hit back or the need to be unkind or as Obama said just because you're a man that you feel like you can't be kind that kindness is not a part of manhood that understanding that in all honesty to be kind to not hit back takes more courage and strength to hit back it's easy to hit back That's not a sign of strength. It's easy to, if you get hit, to hit back. That's easy. But it takes some serious courage and strength to take a hit and not hit back. Now, I'm not advocating folks not to be able to defend themselves. That's not what we're saying. But you have folks that on a daily basis, they're looking for a fight. They're looking for someone to degrade and the truth of the matter is the reason I like is because they don't love themselves they don't love themselves that's why they're always looking to try to make themselves seem like something in comparison to someone else that's why they're always downing someone that's why they're always wanting to deport groups of people that's why they're always trying to alienate group that's why they're downgrading women again that's a topic for another episode It really does take much more strength not to strike back when someone has has done something against you. I read something on social media the other day, and some of the memes are so, I mean, they are really good. But there was one that says, it doesn't matter the size of your car, your house, your title, and I'm paraphrasing. And there was a few other things on the list because it said at the end of the day, our graves are the same size. Stay humble. Doesn't matter if you're driving a Maybach. Doesn't matter if you're driving a Hyundai. Doesn't matter if you have a 10 room mansion or if you're living in a hut. When all is said and done, the grave sizes for the most part are going to be the same size. Stay humble. So I think that's what President Obama was trying to get across in terms of the life of the Honorable Representative Congressman Elijah Cummings. And I can truly say for the few minutes that we were together on November 3rd, 2018, the assessment of everyone that I heard given commentary was absolutely on point. I gathered that from the couple of hours that we sat together. I listened to Elijah Cummings' words again. I played it for myself and my listening audience on my radio show. And his message, you could lift that message from November 3rd, 2018 to October 27th, 2019, and it would still be just as appropriate. Certainly, He will be missed. 
because he said last year he was 67 years old at the time he he said one of the things he said in his speech was to the youth if there was one thing he could buy from them if they could sell it it would be their youth he said i would buy it and it wouldn't have to be on sale he was talking about their youth obama said something along the lines that he would always say we don't know how much time we have here and sure enough that came out through his speech as well he said to the youth if i could buy your youth i would buy it and it wouldn't have to be on sale yes he will be missed is my understanding that he was signing subpoenas up to the time he took his last breath. That he was still working on his deathbed. He will certainly be missed. He was indeed, as Obama said, honorable. Because that was another area that President Obama went into in the eulogy. That we put that honorable title on anyone who is an elected official. Everyone who is an elected official is not necessarily honorable. And that's a point that came across during that eulogy as well. But in Elijah Cummings' case, he was indeed honorable. Thank you for listening. You can catch me live each Saturday morning as I host my radio show, The Reading Circle with Mark Medley, where I interview authors from around the world. That's from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. It web streams around the world on gobrave.org, G-O-B-R-A-V-E dot org. Also, it is on the TuneIn radio app. And if you're in northern New Jersey, New York area, you can catch it on FM radio 88.7 FM. If you go to my website, it is the hub to everything else. M-A-R-C-A-M-E-D-L-E-Y dot com. Mark A. Medley dot com. If you go there, it is the portal to everything else. This show is heard on all the major podcast distribution sites. Please subscribe again. Till we meet again. Have a wonderfully blessed time frame. However long it is before the next episode is released. But again, you can catch me live on Saturday mornings, my YouTube channel. All of that access is on my website, markamedley.com.